making moves in a sumo to some common over 50,000 rand to invest in a business. 13 entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Business, business. Each entrepreneur will get an opportunity to pitch for this investment into their business. The judges will use their own discretion. We'll go through to our final episode where they will battle it out for the grand prize. Who will I making moves? In Jalong Komsomlugo, go 2 p.m. Quiz ABC One. Mzansi for sure. We feel that the next step is to attend to the general consumer. That's what we feel. You haven't reached your pinnacle in the corporate space yet. All it's telling me in simple terms is you're trying to reinvent the wheel. I'll tell you what attracts me to your business. You understand the sector, you understand the industry, you understand the need um, for people to change, for, for healthy living and all that. I don't know if you've tried to go to a, a, a mall owner and try and set up a food mm -hmm. truck in their parking lot. They, mm -hmm. they, don't, they typically don't allow it. No. Actually, they do. Johannesburg is slowly becoming the culinary capital of South Africa, bursting with flavor from every corner to satisfy your palatable taste. Oba keng le pile, ongo munye gabo suma business aba ni kampani azongo kuwa i food you know. Lentsi zole nage, aba ni gaban tu gaba tutuki sage. Wona lumkaka lona gwo gul. Kale zinongo ezimnandi ai faga la pele gengo ake loga pega. Sit at a two baggers at all ice cats with stocks and again. Nayo will insist only. It was the lowest general lady business like Walsum Laranja. I'm Oba King, Oba King Lepile, co owner and founder of Foyoko, which is an acronym for food you know. We're the chef's company. We specialize primarily in taking the ingredients and the dishes that you know and grew up with but serving them in a way that you'd least expect it. You can find us on www.foyoko, that's F-O-Y-O-K-O.co.za. Nampaknya <laughs> Talk to me about, about that journey moving from Hospanela to Hobamo. How did that all happen? I got a job with a company called uh, Balkan Catering Equipment. So, I don't have any problems. Yeah, in fact. And then, I proposed I could take over the canteen. Yeah. And then, as a result, I had to resign from full-time employee yeah. to service provider. Yeah. So now, Kieta, he ran out this place mm -hmm. as a central production kitchen oh. for Foyoko. Yeah. Right? So, as you can see, Dijote, here to Hamo, here to another satellite site. Okay. Where we've got what we call a trolley service. Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, yeah. And another corporate building. You, you prepare ordinary food, Same. but you serve in a different way. Very much. Talk to me about that. How do you serve in a different way? Umina e. Everything we want more mm. are ingredients that we eat. Yeah. Beetroot, we eat. The olives, we eat. Yes. Beef, we eat. But also eat mm. the flavor. Yes. Something totally new. Yes, sir. So now, remove the drink. 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 Remove the drink.
Is this what you feed them as well? Like, well usually, Rebafa a heavy, substantial meal. And mm -hmm. it's balanced. Because Baja is one calendar. And sometimes Baja breakfast. Yeah. So, but quality is one. It's one. All right. Dad, I'm going to talk to you in the kitchen. I'm going to go to the kitchen. I'm going to go to the kitchen. I'm going to go to the kitchen. Yeah, I'm going to go to the kitchen. All right. All right. See ya. Yes, sir. Welcome to our kitchen. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, and here we are. Uh -huh. See, so our kitchen's got different stations. Yeah, we are. Right, that's getting ready to go. So what we're gonna first do is we're just gonna put on some gloves. Oh, I mean, at, yeah, at we're gonna put on a pair there. So, okay. Yeah, man. The benefits are how to our Nisa Benzelela. Yeah. In map. And the benefits are, you know? First benefit is that Renale, a captive audience. So market are not here, Yeah. So we're, we're guaranteed revenue. Yeah. At the end of the day, yes. Sir. I think another one is that as a PE supplier, we don't pay for the facility. Ah, but we still have high overheads. Oh. As you can see, we've got a whole crew yeah. of people, and then I've got access to the facility 24/7. Yeah. I can come here on a Sunday, like whenever I need to. This is my central production kitchen. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. You say we need to be able to manage it, but to serve salary one. Yeah. Why can't I fill it? Six, including myself. Yes. And then we've got a seventh administrator who's never in the kitchen. Yeah. But helps us a lot with admin and marketing issues. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Kamala Mutula and Matebula, and basically, my partner like Haya Bufoyoko. I'm also the creative director slash executive chef. When I met Oba King, we both had a dream to be self-sufficient, meaning since seven Zen. But obviously we were in college then, still getting our education. And the idea was to experience. And then masses feel I'm not ready. So so yeah, what you see now is the culmination of, of, of that whole um, journey or process. This is part of lunch for the guys in the factory. Okay, machita spanangi. Machita spananka yefe. Yeah. So okay. for today, baja these potato discs, mm -hmm. baja uh, chia butter panini, le nice. roast chicken and a side salad. Yeah. So I know Ronaldi, the you know cooking shows it's, it's a different. Please tell me a bit kato uh, outside of this facility and like a. Still, Tonaki, us venturing into the marketing space oh. or marketing industry yes. where we market other FMCG products. Nice. So what we do is we sell our service um, of demo cooking, live cooking in front of an audience yes. to big companies that own brands consumed no. by consumers. So rice, flour, sugar. In total. In total. Yeah. So re, re, re exist the more hospitality industry, the mm. more marketing and branding. Yes, sir. We met with Oba King, I think it was like um, June, June, July, there, uh, because the new thing that we are trying, uh, at Shell, they're trying to introduce, we are trying uh, to educate people to eat a healthy, uh, healthy lifestyle. So Oba King was one of the green banana suppliers. The thing that makes me to work with him is he loves what he's doing, he's good in what he's doing. I can call him at 10. 10 in an evening, wanting him uh, to fix something for me in the breakfast. So I wanted the people who are flexible, uh, when I call you at any given time and said, I need this, to be able to accommodate me. It's great to cook for so-and-so. <laughs> it is, but eh? in terms of the financial value to your business, it's really worth dololo. Over King Nunfu Abumnan, one of the Bakulisu Ahumawab, at the turn of democracy, Kulil Lagit, 
Iti ke lintizu wake, ezi nyeze zinto gena azi kumbula nga lis katise se mngani. Uguba ke iyona ke lintizu wa eyota yomundo mnyama, ese tlasin, eli kwele abelu, nga lis katika wa yifunda la payani kumati racial school. Sita te itu uba ke sakukusana na banta bama ziga banzige eno uba keng, basichela ka banzige, uti lintizu wale nage, ibinja nga lis katisa kule. If most people knew, who re, you know, in Stofosi. Stofosi. Stofosi was our saving grace. Obakeng is an artist. That's who Obakeng is. Character ya Obakeng, I think the best way Engai describe him is is colorful. It's it's vibrant. It's um, in the words of Bob Marley, he's the stone that the builder refused. Um, Ubakeng was born in Rockville, Soweto. Esh, the goal, ne? Kile kolo nzadi model si, tesira. You know, my mother made it a priority to send us to Sunday Times Top 100 schools our whole lives. So we had to wake up 5 a.m. ratla pare tsang tsang reakwa, and then we were exposed to another mahoa, the you know, and 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 a totally different life. Primary school, nereleko king Edwards preparatory school. And then high school, Kayako King Edward School. And then I decided to change the goal of Hoyako John O Technical High School from my standard seven year. After John O, I was in the technical college setting up because I was in the career of the career. So unfortunately, I was in the career of the career. Mom's approval is not something you'd get very easily. My mom didn't understand what I wanted to be a chef. Like she didn't get it. You know, back then in the 90s, she pushed for guys maths, science, engineering, all of that. And, you know, Obi fought tooth and nail to study cookery. Losing my mom was, was, was... I think I was anticipating it, you know, she was, uh, she was quite sick, um, breast cancer, you know, so when it happened, it, it came as a shock to the system, obviously, but I understood because I, I got to watch this whole process. And she'd always say, it was brutal, it was harsh, it was tough love. But, I mean, it, it, it wasn't easy. It was, it, you know, I can't say it changed my, my whole life process because I was raised to be independent. I was raised um, to be responsible. So, for me, it was like, Okay, now I really have to apply what I've been taught by my mother. Oba keng ke mutwa urata ba tu ke mutlo lena wa itata ena se mutlo rong urata ditshele ke mutlo rong ba tantu tse street. Ezo le ntwa di legit le ena o legit on what it you on what it does. You know, Tricky appreciate tanga oba keng truly speaking. He's an honest person. Ah and to say ngaye a potolo we u jwetsa straight to the face with my man i don't like this and this and this um working working on a hair that's one of the the number one things that i i love and hate about my brother i think my strongest qualities are that are that I'm, i am myself that's the first thing you know um i never try pretend to be anything that I'm not. Um, another strong quality is that I always seek for growth. So any transaction I enter into, it's always about how does this help us grow in the transaction. 
Ama sonda mbalwa shule, besi no Martin Solomon. Ebe kuhie na kubo pete izi nti ambu njengo baga u Pepsi. Ebe ye peshe ya wezi luandle, keza ama business. Ebu hile insizwa njenga manje isi studio sweti koki sana no uba keng. Lapo ya kona ge efu na wazu kutu uba keng yena. Wenza ama pige ama suguza wazu kutu nchu bali sa ipiznis lake ifoyok. Kuzilie pambi. Yo, I'm tweeting this. I just arrived at Making Moves, about to meet Pepsi, and this is going to be really dope. They say the average entrepreneur fails between two and a half and three and a half times before they eventually get it right. Uba King belongs to this club. He's had three businesses closed down and has lost over a hundred grand in the process. However, his resilience has helped him turn the tide and keep going and now he's on to a new opportunity and this time he's making it work. He's here to share some of the lessons he's learned and share with us his growth plan of how he's going to take his business from here to there. Baking, welcome to Making Moves. Pepsi, my man. How are you, brother? Respect. No, I'm all right. Nice yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, thank, you welcome. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, <clears throat> what's the first business that didn't work? And you're talking to a guy who's had multiple failed businesses, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess we belong to the same club. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I've had Cereal many things that don't. In fact, I've got more things that don't work out than things that do. That do. Yeah, you know, it's funny you should say that. I, I, I remember a clip of Michael Jordan saying that he has, fa he has missed more than 6,000 shots in his life, and that is why he succeeds. Mm -hmm. You know, so I suppose failure breeds success. Exactly. So the first business that didn't really work out is um, one I started out of my garage at home. So I built an industrial kitchen in my garage at home, and we ran that business for about 18 months. Right, and after about 18 months, my partners felt that it wasn't making enough money to sustain itself, and um, they feel like they needed to move on. So fortunately, I had just gotten a job, and um, so the partnership, I was outvoted. So out of three of us, the two partners decided that, you know, we need to shut down this operation. So what were you we doing did. from the industrial kitchen? Um, we had cre we were doing, we're in the hood, so Nerik said God. Okay. And then yeah. that's an oversimplification, but as a chef, I don't take anything away from anything that I do. So Laila God, as simple as it may sound, it was really gourmet style. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you had gourmet quarters, and then what else? What and then there was the catering happened. So at the time, one of my major clients was Mutsuwako, the TV show. So I did work for them. Another major client was um, El Dukashe. So I did a lot of um, video shoots, mm -hmm. catering on video shoots. So that was the, the core of my business at the time. Okay, yeah. so now describe this business today. This business now, as it stands, it, we have two major corporate clients. The first major corporate client is where we are situated, where our central production kitchen is. And then the next major corporate is um, like a satellite, where we send breakfast, lunch, and meeting catering to that site on a daily basis. Okay, yeah. so other than these two corporate clients, what else is happening in the business? Our core focus with our food is delivering a healthy alternative on the food that you know. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, right? So part of our clientele are people who need private um, meal plans, for example, where someone would phone me and say, for the next month, I'm trying to achieve one, two, three, right? And then I would say, okay, what did your dietitian say or what are you thinking? Then we would have a conversation around that, and I would then design a meal plan and then deliver the meal plan, the meal plan, you know, as per spec specification. Okay. So what? 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 Uh, the, now I'm I'm trying to understand the numbers, right, and understand how the business works. Okay. The canteen, delivering food to corporate clients for their staff. Yeah, yeah. Um, private individuals who mm -hmm. want meal plans where you play the role of dietitian slash external chef mm. uh, with prepared meals yeah. and then catering for events and those weddings kinds of things, weddings. Kind of thing, yes. well, let's split that up by revenue. Canteen used to be 100% of my revenue, but now it forms, I, I think it forms about 60% of my revenue now. Okay. So that's the main canteen. Okay. And then the satellite mm -hmm. gives me another 35 odd percent of my revenue. Okay. And then everything else is split. Okay, so the, the, other, the other five or so percent, five percent, ne? Yeah. The other five percent is split between 
event. private clients and events. Yeah, only because private clients, they are not a regular occurrence. How many tenders, how many opportunities have you gone after in terms of the meal delivery for, for big, big corporates? Look, the meal de delivery is a new part of the business. It's actually about four months old at most, mm -hmm. you know, so that's fairly new. But I think it's important to, to get the formula right. It's important to get the right systems in place before I can run out and look for more business because I'd rather get, I'd rather get this right and get it perfect and leave a system that's working so that when I'm not operational and I'm focusing more on looking for business, the, I'm not strangled by my own growth. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm, my, my view is, is that you do need to focus a bit more in terms of getting the systems right with the mm -hmm. canteen mm -hmm. and the meal delivery service. Mm -hmm. And get it, it, not that you're not getting the system right right now, but the system is partially dependent on you. It is. And, and how to remove yourself so that you can go ahead and grow the business is, is the first thing. But also, I feel like you're distracted by this 5%. It's great to cook for so and so. <laughs> it is, but eh? In terms of the financial value to your business, it's really worth. Dololo. <laughs> well, it depends on, on how you look at it. How does cooking for a famous singer help you? <laughs> Other than increase your Instagram following. <laughs> look. Business, I've, I've realized, is really about relationships, to be quite frank with you, you know. So these people um, are businesses in themselves. So the better I maintain a relationship, the better it is for me to get more business, even bigger business, out of them when they are doing things like launches and, and that kind, which has worked, which, has, which is where this relationship has taken me. Woody, thank you. Eta. Um, good luck with your pitch tomorrow. And yeah, yeah. I hope the feedback's been helpful. You're going to go off and hit a coaching session now. Yeah. And, um, you know, bounce some ideas off another human being as well. I dig. All right. Eta. Obakeng has articulated where he wants to take his business. He's making a lot of the right moves and asking the right questions. I think the experience of losing money in business in the past has helped him to be a little more calculated when he makes decisions. He's now going to spend some time with a business coach who will help him prepare for his pitch tomorrow. Um, the biggest challenge is identified is the need to go out and find more business and particularly the tendering kind of business that, that he was referring to. So that was the biggest thing that he identified and that maybe the focus should be more on, um, or less on the 5% of the private clients and focus more on the corporate and get more corporate business. Maybe how the, the growth that you would like to see or that you envision right now is not necessarily the growth that or the growth trajectory that we are looking at. Yeah, and so remember, that's how an investor is going to look at it. operating since 2013 yes at this venue yes it's concerning me one thing 60 percent of your revenue is coming from this client it used to now yeah. it's split a bit in yeah. the sense that um, they're not they're no longer my only corporate client yes you've got two now. I've got two corporate yeah. clients so my 60 yeah. percent of my revenue comes from both of my okay corporate so 60 percent comes from the canteen but not from one client not from one client. Okay. Yeah. The only danger of it still is that the premises that make this 60% are still with this client. It doesn't bother me only in as, in as far as that is a, a business environment that we, are, that we are operating in where 
where a lot of big corporates need to get compliant, especially with their BEE numbers. If this relationship changes, and that's the problem with relationships, today they work, tomorrow something doesn't work. A manager changes, the company takes a different policy on things and that, and you find yourself to be out of here and that it's going to mean a disaster for the business. Diversify that one. Everything is opinions, you know. Um, what I put forward, it, it's an opinion in my analysis of the business. It is not, it, it is not the rule of law. I think the growth is proportionate to paying the school fees that one needs to pay in order to, to see real success in monetary terms. Our growth path you know, is more consumer orientated. Yeah. So we try, we want, we are headed towards the restaurant space. Mm. That's where we are headed. Mm. That's where we see the best growth for us. Yeah. But then obviously we're speaking uh, about um, intensive capital injection to get you to that point, yeah. Yeah. you know. So yeah. maybe how the, the growth that you would like to see or that you envision right now is not necessarily the growth that or the growth trajectory that we are looking at. Yeah, and so, remember, that's how an investor is going to look at it. I think uh, by the measure of any investor in, in a business and that, growing a business to two clients in three years, um, it's very bad. Look, I think that I'm in one of the most saturated markets in terms of business, number one. And I think number two, that sometimes a business is, a, is an organic process. Um, that, that kind of just unfolds um, on its own. So I think I'm comfortable with how far I've come only up until this point. What you need to demonstrate on your pitch is that in this three years, quantify that growth. Make me see the growth to say, this growth is not in the number of clients, but this growth is in systems, this growth is in partnerships, this growth is, because that will sum up that the three years did not go to waste. But if you cannot show me that, and you say it's three years, and I have got these two clients, and I don't see all the other things that came up with three years, then I see a person that is just in employment with changed terms. What he needs to do going forward is to be aggressive. Aggressive in going to look for this business, aggressive in putting proposals forward, aggressive in tendering for jobs and that. If that aggressiveness can meet the understanding of the industry that he has, he'll be a winner. At this moment, the problem is that he's too relaxed about things. The prize money is relatively small. There's only so far 50K can go. So if I have to pitch within the context of 50K, then what I pitch for can't be the massive expansion of the business. It has to be in proportion to, to what the context of the 50K can get. So is your pitch and see this is your pitch, I'm fun. This is your pitch. Uh, butterflies, but it's all good. I'm a pitch into Zako, listen. Well, presentation is getting to Zako. Yeah. Pitch, it's a first. Mm -hmm. For this, in this particular type of setting, it's a first. But I'm used to an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Izolo, you met a business coach. Now, I took Peggy's in to the panel. I'm going to prepare in for a pitch. Are you going to use some of the things that he spoke to you about, Izolo? Well, yeah, actually, because in figure, I cousin and then we had a really long discussion about it, and then we came up with um, a, a viable nice. strategy, if I may put it that way. Yeah. Hey, so now we're going to put up. Now we're done. By three, we're going to put up. Aye, we're born. Thank you, Peter. All the best. I guess when we're going to say shy pitch, I'm going to go to the house. We're going to go to the house.
Joaquin, welcome to Make Your Moves. Thank you. Or rather, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, how are you yeah. feeling? I'm feeling good, but you guys got such straight faces. No, we're serious people here, man. Hey, yeah, we're here clearly. We do business, we don't play. Yeah. Okay, so how it works now, you have four minutes to pitch your business. Okay. Um, you know, tell us about the business, tell us what you're going to do with the money. You met Lucas, you spent yes, some time with Lucas. him. Yes. Um, he gave you some advice. This yeah, is Martin. Hi, Martin. These are my partners in crime. So the four minutes starts now. Starts now. Okay. We exist to help our customers make better and healthier lifestyle choices. And this is the premise our entire business is built on. Now, we are all aware of the statistics, right? Uh, South Africa is the most obese country in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, we're all aware of the effects of global warming. And we're all aware of the sharp spike in um, lifestyle diseases. Now, all of this translates into a consumer who's more woke. This consumer is more conscious of the choices that he makes. This consumer is more conscious of the effect they have on the immediate environment. They're more conscious of um, the effects that the additives have, the additives in their food have on their health and on them. So this is the market and this is where it's going. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's an evolution happening. And we as Foyoko, or Food You Know, are at the cusp or are riding this wave. And um, having said that, we intend on making sure that every consumer who is as conscious and as aware about the kind of choices they need to make to maintain a good health and therefore good wealth makes it easier for them to make those decisions, right? So how we intend on doing this is we intend on increasing our footprint in the industry and penetrating the industry or penetrating the market or even exposing ourselves right to people who find it very difficult to make the right kind of decisions but cannot change their eating habits because they're so entrenched into their systems right so how we intend to do this is we intend on rolling out a below the line marketing strategy that'll see us doing two main things one exponentially growing the business, right? And two, exposing ourselves um, to the wider consumer market. Like, as you've known, we have been playing mostly in the corporate space, right? Now, the next, the next step in our business is to attend to the general consumer, right? And we can only do that by putting in place or executing our below-the-line marketing strategy, which is really based on sales-driven marketing activations. At this point, I am willing to take any questions. Cool. You got a minute left? Are you sure you're done? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm ready to interact. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to jump into a question and answer session. Let's do it. Um, Lucas, I'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> for me, the, the numbers didn't come out clear. Um, how big is this, is this market that you are talking of? Um, what percentage do you currently have of this market? And, and what percentage are you looking um, in getting in this market in two years' time? In two years' time. Well, I won't give you percentage numbers or percentage points at this point, but our sales-driven marketing activation aims to reach at least a thousand, a thousand people or make a thousand sales per activation. Okay. Okay. So we intend that in one weekend of sales driven marketing activations, we intend to reach at least 3.2, 3,200 people per activation. What are you going to be offering the consumer? So what's the actual product offering? Okay. As food, you know, the name says it all. It's the food, you know. So we don't intend on reinventing the wheel. No, not at all. 
Our intention is to take the same kind of products that consumers are generally eating that are causing them to have these um, health problems and lifestyle problems, but serve it to them in a more nutritious fashion, right? So everything from your burger to your gota to your seven colors type meals, depending on the LSM that we are, we are focusing on in that particular, um, on that particular weekend. So if we are in Soweto, we will be creating products that the people in Soweto are used to. Where would you be selling them? Well, the market-driven activations or the sales-driven activations aim to go where the, where the crowds are on any given weekend. So we're looking at the parking lot of any popular mall. You know, Soweto now is mushrooming with shopping centers and malls, right? So every weekend, we have a touch point to hit. And then once we're done with Soweto, we'll hit every other township. Once we're done with every other township, we'll move to the higher LSMs to give them a different product. So are you then targeting events or targeting spaces? We're targeting touch points, and events are one of our touch points. You see, events currently form a large part, well, not a large part, depending on the kind of events we want to, uh, we want to um, target. But events are one of our touch points, but we want to focus mostly on these retail spaces where we have a mass concentration of consumers on any given weekend. Through these activations, what is your desired outcome? Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting that you're going to these touch points. Yes. And through these activations, you base it's an introduction of your product, right? Yes. And you're obviously wanting continuation from yes. that. Correct. Correct. Um, so what what happens then? How how do these people access this product? What's what's the after? What's the aftermath? Okay. Initially, what I said was this: that we want to increase our footprint. So we want to penetrate the market. So once we've identified places that we feel that, or we've researched that this is a good space, we will then look into further putting a site or putting a, 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 an outlet, if I may put it that way, in that particular, in that specified area. We're thinking a mobile unit okay. would work because that is the most cost-effective way to create another outlet. So do, what? I mean, you, you want to do a food truck. Mm. And you want to sell, yeah, you want to do a food truck and you want to set it up mm. outside retail or mass kind of places where there are lots of people. Essentially. I don't know if you've tried to go to a, a, a mall owner and try and set up a food mm -hmm. truck in their parking lot. They, mm -hmm. they don't, they typically don't allow it. No. Actually they do. Agencies. See, because if you're an agency and you're doing an activation, yes. one thing, yes. setting up a food truck to sell when a mall has got tenants that also Correct. sell food, that they Completely. don't allow They that. have to protect mm. their tenants. Mm. Look, we feel that it's better if we initially activate outside and see what is the response in that particular area to our product. Once we're satisfied with the response to our product, only then will we start making moves to get our shop into the mall or to become a tenant of the mall. Thanks, brother. We're going to sit and deliberate and then give you feedback once we're done. Thank you. I think it went pretty well, you know, and I'm confident in my product. Um, yeah, it just goes, to, we just have to wait and see how the judges feel about it. All right, guys, so, um, food you know. I love the name mm. for your cook. Very catchy. Mm. Yeah, very cool name. What do you guys think? I'm slightly confused. Why? As to where they're going. Um, I didn't understand exactly what the path is that they wanting to follow in business. Whether he's wanting to do the food truck thing, whether it's just marketing activation for after sales, or I, I'm, I'm confused. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Do you think I'm a church is a sweet store? Well, come on, Angel. I'm going to say. A uh, strategy, strategy. Mm. Uh, go to Funuenza Ganja and then Toyako. Mm. So, we are going to go to Bona by us understanding the Simo Ogu so mm. La Funuia corner now. Mm. Then so Bona mm. He He's spoken about uh, healthy living. He understands the market very well mm. and where the market is going. 
but I don't think he, he, he is placing himself quite right in the market. You know, uh, yesterday he spoke about um, customized eating, you know, and all that, and it didn't come out then today. So I'm sort of very unsure that it's, it's, not, it's not consistent. During the Q&A, there was a pattern between, you know, Pepsi Yabuza, mm. Lucas Yabuza, mm. Martin Yabuza, now we are paying to the pattern. What, uh, we need to pick up in, you know, 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 you uh, I'm a corporate in mm -hmm. says Puma says serve the, the general market. So mm -hmm. I hope they got that. Yeah. Yeah. The model that he's currently running has got great potential. Mm. The, there it is got the current one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if he uses this truck and that for activation so that he can sell this other side of the business, mm. and that is purely for activation, yeah, yeah. to sell this other part of the business, it will definitely work. Mm. Which part of the business? The, the one that he's running now, so you know, the canteen, the... Canteen, uh, yeah. the, um, the one where he does the prepackaged yeah. meals, so yes. he's got an industrial yeah. kitchen, Sending right? that out. Do more of that yeah. and go and yeah. go to different office parks and stuff Correct. with this thing. The one yeah. where and, he and cooks just, for people yeah. that mm. have got events and come yeah. to their homes and cook and that that market he can get into that mm. market. It's a market that is emerging and that not mm. too many people are in that market. And it's a market also that works by referral. So if he gets if he does a good job with a few guys and that he would be able to get yes. more. So in that industry he will succeed. Yeah. Okay. This is a boy. As in, I'm shy, you confident, you just <laughs> you ready. Yeah, well, I mean, but I mean, I'm yeah. it's not dependent on what they say. Oxalayo, I mean, less strategy, just implement it. And then, just yens, with or without, we get what we Yeah. Ganja lunch. How many people are going to go? Sure, sure, sure. All, all, all. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so Oren, what did you think of the pitch and the question and answer? What's your impression? Um, I, I thought it was uh, interactive, and I think uh, the questions were, were quite relevant. Uh, gave me things to think about in terms of refining the strategy itself. Uh, but the strategy is still the strategy. That's, that's still our game plan going forward. You want to go into food trucks, essentially, as a platform to sell your food. Um, I'm, I'm correct in saying that, right? You're correct. You're correct in saying that even though the actual, um, the goal is to go into the, is to open restaurants. That's okay. the goal. But initially, the, the mobile satellite kitchens are the most cost-effective way to do that in the interim while we are working towards opening a chain of restaurants. You're going into the streets and you're competing with food truck guys that have become very good at food trucks. Because no. and that's what it is. I mean, I'm a plate. Well, I mean, look, it doesn't mean that we are leaving the corporate space. This is a growth strategy. This is where to from here. Right? So over and above the corporate space, over and above getting more corporate clients, we feel that the next step is to attend to the general consumer. That's what we feel. You haven't reached your pinnacle in the corporate space yet. The corporate space is massive, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're doing exceptionally well at it. All it's telling me in simple terms is you're trying to reinvent the wheel. I would much rather put the energy there and, and make that a very, very lucrative business and then diversify from there. The other thing is, at the moment, you've got a business that's working. Yeah. When you go into a food truck now, 
you this market is going to suffer a little bit i'll tell you what attracts me to your business you understand the sector you understand the industry you understand the need um, for people to change for for healthy living and all that that market it's a massive market combined with your corporate operations and that that's a massive market i think you going out and wanting to to start outlets is going out of that market. If you sit and say, I'm going to do sales-driven uh, activations in order to introduce this market of mine or these services in this market to the people, yes, yes, yes. But doing these activations to start outlets, it's gonna take your attention and focus from this market that you still need to focus on to grow. I, 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 I feel like you need to expose your model and your idea to more people. Mm -hmm. Be truly teachable and just get some feedback. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure I buy into it, so I can't support your, your, your moving forward because I feel like you're being distracted from what you're doing really well. And I feel like you're going into a food truck space, which is very competitive and has got a lot of people. Because the barriers to entry are low, yes. you're competing with a lot of people and therefore, I still can't see what USP you'd have other than saying my food is different, but everybody says that about their food. And, 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 and having a central kitchen, so maybe waiting times are a bit shorter, but fundamentally, there's nothing different about what you'd be mm -hmm. offering. I don't agree what, with you, but I get what you're saying. Okay. You know, even though I don't agree with it. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. So, Okay, cool. I mean, I think I think we can agree to disagree, yeah. but I, I can't support you moving forward. And I, I don't know, I can't speak for you guys, but for me, no. I, I've kind of, yeah, we've yeah. reached a fundamental kind of disjuncture. Yeah. 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 Look, at, at, at this moment, uh, I still believe in the other model. Absolutely. All right, so I, I, would, I would support him going forward on that model. But that's not what he presented. That's not what he wants to do. That's not what he presented. Okay, guys, we have to wrap it up. So Thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much. Wish you the best of luck, brother. Shop. Thanks. Thanks. I think the judges can't get, can't find the synergy, I think. Um, but I think that the strategy is still a strategy, you know, to move, to start talking to the general consumer is a very important part in growing any business. But look, what, what Obakim presented today caught me by a surprise. I think, I feel that the business model changed from what it was yesterday to today. No doubt, going back, one will sit down and take in the, the, the feedback from the judges and even uh, communicate with the judges going forward, or some of the judges going forward. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with my strategy.